Greetings and welcome. This is Keeping in Touch, one of the ways that we here at Sylvania United Church of Christ work at staying connected during the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Reverend Vern Sweat, and I'm joined by several members of our ministry team. I hope everyone is having a good week so far. I'd like to get started by sharing some highlights from the weekend. I had several highlights. The first one in order of uh, sequence would be Friday evening. Uh, we had a great youth group bonfire. And I'm gonna ask Mary, who helped coordinate this, to say a little bit more about that. Sure, uh, we, the Youth Advisory Committee, which is sort of, a, we, uh, uh, we started, uh, sponsored this bonfire for all youth from ages 7th to 12th grade. Um, and uh, we gathered outdoors, socially distanced, masked, uh, having a bonfire. The kids were able to play some socially distanced games uh, and including uh, a glow-in-the-dark Frisbee we could <laughs> So um, we look forward to uh, having more events in the future, uh, and, uh, and uh, we will be participating in an outreach event that Kristen will be uh, talking about shortly. Um, and if people, if there are other youth interested, Kendall Kleinschmidt is really sort of the youth contact, uh, or Kathleen Waite, uh, if you want more information, or myself, of course. So if people are interested in helping with the Halloween activity. That's all I'll say. We'll let Kristen say more. But if youth are interested, they would talk with uh, Kendall, Kathleen, or you, Mary. Correct. Yeah. The other thing I would say is the bonfire was wonderful. It was great to be with the kids. Uh, I would say that when I first saw a bonfire, I thought of something really large, a, a giant fire, and was worried how that would happen here at church. Um, just for people who might think we were doing crazy things in youth ministry, the bonfire, I think, would better be described as um, a campfire. It was completely safe because there were a couple of scouts here. It was in a fire pit. It was great. We um, had this fire pit at the center of the labyrinth area, which is a, a great area to gather. So we stayed warm around the fire. We shared uh, some uh, icebreakers. It was really cool to see the kids playing glow in the dark Frisbee and um, just have the opportunity to get together. That's actually a beautiful area to gather. So I feel blessed that we have that labyrinth area in that circle where you can gather. Actually, there was one point where the fire was reflected in the windows. So if you looked at it, you saw like half a dozen images of fires in the windows um, in a semicircle around where we were gathered. It was very cool. Uh, so thanks, Mary and the Youth Advisory Committee for initiating that. And we look forward to the next activity. Uh, another highlight for me of the weekend was Rebecca's concert Sunday afternoon. I just want to thank everyone who joined in for that on Sunday afternoon and uh, remind everyone that one of the benefits we have of now recording events like that and putting them on our YouTube is that the concert will be available for almost two more weeks. It'll be up on our YouTube channel through November 1st. So you can watch it and listen to it. And you can invite your friends to watch it and listen to it as well. The other highlight for me of, let's call it the extended weekend because it was Monday evening, was um, a Zoom chat, but it was, uh, all the Zoom chats have been absolutely wonderful getting to know people and gathering online. This one was especially especially um, interesting and meaningful because it included people literally from all over the East Coast. 
Um, and I have a picture of everyone who gathered. I have their permission to share the picture. And Kristen is going to put that up on our screen. So in the picture, you see um, my wife, Rebecca, Kathy Tashima, me, and then you see um, Pam Bennett, Andrea Seibold, Marianne Stibbe, Joe and Jean Hardy, Phyllis Palmer, and um, I might have the name wrong here. She, oh, how could I? I wrote it wrong, but it's Sharon Chittister right there in the center. Uh, you would all know Sharon very well. And in addition to just being a great gathering, what last night's Zoom chat reflects for us in terms of this new world in which we live because of COVID, um, one of the silver linings is people are getting together, um, gathering from all over the place. Uh, we're starting to realize that the old way we used to thought of church membership in terms of geographical proximity um, is no longer necessarily true. We're starting to think outside the box in that sense. Uh, the, so the folks on your screen are from, I think I have this correct, Florida, Ohio, Michigan, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Um, none of them were in Sylvania, but all of them consider themselves to be a part of the Sylvania United Church of Christ family. So I just think that um, is something we need to start processing, uh, that this new virtual reality allows us to be connected way beyond the walls of the church and the geographical uh, within driving distance, to have people from all those states be able to come together, share with one another, enjoy uh, the company, um, and make a connection, just, uh, again, could be one of the silver linings of this horrible pandemic. So I lift that up. First and foremost, um, getting to connect with all the people in the screen, um, just everyone. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, it was just an honor to be able to talk to Sharon Chittister in person. Um, I feel honored to be sitting here at what used to be Bill's desk. But there were so many aspects of last night's gathering that were great. That was um, a huge highlight for me. Um, so I think that's it for highlights. I'm going to move into upcoming events and activities. This week, we'll continue with Scripture of the Week. That is tomorrow, Wednesday at 1 o'clock and Thursday at 7. Um, the passage is Matthew 22, verses 34 through 46. I will be leading the Scripture of the Week discussions. However, I'm happy and thankful and looking forward to the fact that our preacher this coming weekend will be uh, Reverend Mary Meadows, who's right here with us now. Thank you for preaching this weekend. We look forward to your sermon. Uh, Kristen, will you share a little bit about um, the upcoming I want to call it many things because it covers children, outreach, fellowship. I'll let you take it from there. Thanks, Vern. Yes, on Saturday, October 31st, we're having an event in the parking lot called the Mask Parade. Um, will take place from 2 till 4 p.m. So we're in need of candy donations, people to decorate their trunks, people to pass out candy, and people to collect donations for Sylvania Area Family Services. So perhaps you don't want to serve 
in the other ways I listed, come that Saturday and drop off food or personal care items for Sylvania Area Family Services. We'd love to see you all as a part of this event in whatever way you feel comfortable serving. Also wanna lift up our annual Blanket Sunday through Church World Service. This is something that the congregation supports every year. Uh, Jim Witter will be doing a special announcement this coming Sunday in honor of that. We're asking for a $10 donation or more to support one blanket through Church World Service. If you just write a check made payable to the church with Blanket Sunday in the memo line, then either drop it off in the church, in the church during office hours or mail it, um, and then we'll get that directed to Church World Service. So thank you for support of outreach and our wider community. The uh, it's trunk or treat, correct? Trunk or treat? Yes. Trunk, trunk or, or treat. treat. Kristen, you mentioned office hours, so that's a good segue into a change that we're working on here at church with the coronavirus. Schedules have been very flexible and fluid. Some people have been working remotely. Um, the whole work uh, structure has really varied. Um, but we are trying to provide a little more structure and clarity here at church in terms of office hours. And let's say, for example, somebody wanted to drop off um, something for an activity or an event. We're, we're gonna give you some set hours so people can know what to expect. And Joyce is gonna add to what I just shared. So Joyce. Yep. Hello everyone. I'm going to share my screen here with you. And I'm gonna talk about the office hours. So um, we're gonna begin our new office hours on Monday, October 26th. They will be Monday through Thursday, 10 to two and Friday, 10 to one. I will be in the office Monday through Thursday and Julie Boyer will be in the office on Friday. The work hours will remain 30 plus hours a week for me and three hours a week for Julie on Fridays. Um, along with that, she'll be filling in as needed. Um, so uh, we're, uh, we're gonna post those actually and they do start on Monday. Um, and the phones are now going to our right in the church so you can leave a voicemail for Pastor Vern or myself and um, also I'd like to remind everyone that next Monday is the deadline for the next newsletter so if you have anything that you want in the next newsletter please email it to me and I will make sure it gets in there thank you thanks Joyce and just uh, to clarify for everyone Joyce's hours in terms of 30 hours a week stay the same. We just wanted to make sure that if people were looking for a time when they could count on the office being open, we could provide that. So Joyce may very well be here before those hours or later, um, but there's flexibility there. Um, still doing some work from home and so on. But if you are looking to come to the church to find uh, Joyce or for the church to be accessible, you can count on those hours being able to do that. So Joyce, thanks for working with me and the personnel committee to get that clarification for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that concludes today's announcements. As I like to say, if you need to continue with your day, may you have a blessed day and rest of the week. I invite you to stay for a few more minutes and hear the scripture of the week, which Reverend Mary Meadows will now share with us. Mary? All right. Again, it's Matthew 22, verses 34 through 46. When the Pharisees had heard, heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put enemy, your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him as an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The word of God for you, the people of God. Uh, the links for scripture of the week went out yesterday. If by any chance you didn't get a link, just... Uh, Give Joyce a call in the office, and we'll get one to you right away. Uh, look forward to hearing Mary's sermon this coming Sunday. I think that covers it for Kit today. Uh, Joyce, Kristen, Mary, anything that I forgot? We're good. So let me lead us in a closing prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for all of your blessings especially the gift of faith and our community of faith, Sylvania United Church of Christ. We pray for one another, for our country and our world, as individuals and as a community of faith. May we shine your light and share your love in all we say and in all we do for the sake of all your children and for the sake of your world. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye, everybody.